Hey guys, I'm Josh from Lazy Acres. Thank you for tuning in. We are saving the world here, one trailer at a time. Today we're gonna to do a orientation, walkthrough, how-to video kind of thing. Uh, the idea is, is maybe customers can watch this ahead of coming uh, to see their trailer, picking it up kind of thing, so they know how everything works. Um, we have Brandon Hanemeyer on, the, on the camera today. He's gonna to throw in his input as well, make sure we're, we're not missing stuff. Um, but yeah, it can be boring. A little repetitive, feel free to skip ahead parts if you want, but the idea is to show you how to use a Transcend trailer uh, by Grand Design, uh, top to bottom. So let's get after it. Up here at the front, um, we have our front power jack, so this just goes up and down. Extend, it means extend the leg, retract means retract the leg. Uh, and then you have an on off button for a front light here. When you're hooking up your trailer with these Transcends, you're gonna be using some kind of weight distribution hitch. So, uh, you know, if you get the centerline TS hitch, which is what we sell most commonly here at Lazy Acres, we've done a video specifically on how to apply and unapply that hitch. So if you want to figure out that part of it, watch that video. Um, but always, whether you're using hitch or not, uh, or weight distribution hitch or not, or what type you are, there's four things that make you legal. First thing is, you have this coupler. This is, the ball is going to come up in underneath. The coupler is going to go on top of it. And then you're going to lock the coupler on top. All right, that lets that doesn't let the ball fall out or the trailer come off the ball. There's a pin that goes through here, so that's the first thing. Make sure you have a pin in your coupler. Then you have your lights. Okay, this is a seven-way connection on all these transcends because they have brakes on there. So seven-way connection plugs into your truck. Your truck or vehicle needs to have a brake controller to control the brakes. Um, so make sure that's the case. That's your second thing. Then you have your chains. So the chains, they need a crisscross underneath the hitch. Okay, so left to right here, crisscross, hook onto the truck, hook onto the truck. Uh, and the reason they crisscross is if, heaven forbid, it comes off the ball, the coupler is actually going to cradle here in these chains, and that's why they're crisscross. So that's the third thing, crisscross your chains. And then the fourth thing is this breakaway cable. So the idea with this cable here, it runs to the back. Not the back, it runs right to here, okay? And if the tr trailer ever comes off the truck or, or vehicle, it's gonna pull this pin and activate the brakes on the trailer so they don't fall, so the trailer doesn't follow you down the road. So that's four things. Pin, breakaway cable, lights, and chains. So you gotta have all four of those there to go down the road legally. And you need a weight distribution hitch, but that's another topic. Now, propane. Um, this is just an empty tank that, that comes with the that uh, that comes from Grand Design. So I grabbed a used tank here that we're going to hook up. Uh, oh, first things first, they have this installed backwards. So the gas valves or the uh, like the the exits here for these are actually supposed to be facing the trailer. So we're going to take these off, flip this around. Okay. Put our one tank on. Put our other tank on. So basically there's a collar here that holds these down. These two tanks here aren't the exact same height just because they're different brand of tanks. But just for demonstration purposes, we tighten that down to just above hand tight here, okay? Turn on the valves. These are righty tighty, lefty loosey, just like screw and screw. Okay. All right, and don't get too crazy here, just hand tight. Now, uh, for the propane here, stay on that side, Brendan. Um, whichever tank this switch is pointing at is the tank it's drawing off of, okay? Once this tank goes empty, there's gonna be some clear glass here that turns red. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, anyways, uh, once, this, once this tank is empty, that turns red, and it'll automatically start drawing off of this tank for you. But we know this tank's empty because this is red. Then we can flip this over, okay? Turn this tank off and get it filled while you're still running that tank over there with the system. So you can just kind of keep going back and forth like that. When this tank goes empty, there's a red light, a red line here that shows up, lets you know it's empty, and it's automatically gonna start drawing from this tank. Just back and forth like that. 
If you put this in the middle, it's gonna drop both tanks equally, which just means you're gonna run out of propane all at once, which isn't ideal. So, but for today, this tank's empty, this tank has propane. So I'm just gonna turn this one on. When I turn the tanks on, I don't just fire them open, I turn them on slowly. And the reason for that is if you just fire them open, the, the regulator of the QEC valve thinks there's a break in the line because there's so much pressure. Um, so you want to turn those on slowly. Uh, you have to get your tanks revalved re every 10 years. That's a long ways away. So in between now and 10 years, you have to get new tanks or get them revalved. Uh, okay, here's our, here's our battery. When this trailer comes from Lazy Acres, it's going to have a battery and a box. So there's going to be a box that encases this battery here. Uh, this brand is simple. Red is positive, black is negative, just like your car. Um, the Transcends have a battery disconnect, so there's no reason for you to really touch this battery throughout the season. You're just gonna flip the disconnector on the side, which we're gonna get to. But for the winter, you need to unhook the battery, bring the battery inside, and store it inside, a, inside the house somewhere. Uh, if you're doing it in the basement or the garage, don't put it on a concrete floor. Make sure there's a piece of wood in between the battery and the... Uh, uh, and, and the floor itself. Now, uh, this is primarily a 12 volt trailer. Um, so it's it, it's imperative that you have a battery on here when you're using the trailer at all times. Even if you're plugged in, to operate the slides, to operate stuff, you really should have a battery. Uh, these Transcends now, uh, for the 2021 versions, they, uh, they have a solar panel on the roof, um, which we don't really need to, to get into too much because that just it just works. Basically, it's gonna take 12 volts from the from the sky or the, the sun I guess convert it to 12 volts and charge your battery that's just always happening um, so that's constantly charging your battery uh, nothing really to, to do up there you know other than maybe keeping it clean that kind of thing um, but that's constantly charging your battery but for the winter you gotta make sure your, your battery comes in because it'll just sit out here and freeze and then crack and then it'd be no good for the next year so bring that inside awesome you know these got like a cover on them that's pretty straightforward. There's a door on top. You'll be able to figure that out. Anything on the front I missed, Brendan? Nope. Okay. So around the side here, we have a pass-through storage. There's a light in here. This is our charge controller. Okay, so that's actually uh, basically regulating the amount of uh, amperage that goes to your battery off the solar panel. Again, nothing to do there. There's no uh, uh, like real maintenance with that. It's just on. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Right here is our city water slash fresh water fill. So if you have water at the site, you're gonna take a, a potable water hose, a white hose, hook it up to the post at the site, bring the water up and in through here, okay? And hook it up to there. Then once you have it hooked on, you're gonna turn the water on at the site. And whatever pressure you have on that hose is pressure you're gonna have on the trailer. So you should get yourself a pressure, a water pressure regulator. It's like a little spigot that goes in between the hose and the trailer. Make sure you get one of those, just to, because if you go to the site and you're first in line at the campsite, you'll have a ton of pressure. Whereas if you're like last in line at the campsite, you have very little pressure. So you should get a water pressure regular, just so you don't blow a line or blow a valve or something like that. So that's to use city water, very straightforward. To fill the fresh water tank, you flip this valve from city water to fresh water tank fill. And that is going to force water to instead go to your taps, to go to your freshwater tank itself. Now in this model, there's two ways to do that. Uh, there's a freshwater fill we're gonna get to that's like a gravity feed one, but this is a pressurized freshwater fill, so to fill your freshwater tank. Um, and then there's a water pump to, to, to pump for that. We're gonna get to that. Now, battery disconnects right here. So you don't need to worry about disconnecting your battery throughout the season. If you're not using the trailer, you know, for a few weeks, just come here, disconnect the battery. Easy peasy, okay? Um, outside receptacle, this will be attached to your GFI that's in the, the bedroom, or sorry, the bathroom or the kitchen. So if this isn't working, it's because the GFI inside is kicked. Cable and satellite. So if you have cable at the site, like physically there at the site, you can run that into here. If you're one of those super campers and you want to set up satellite as well, you can uh, you know set up your satellite out here, face it to the, the satellite, bring that in, and bring it specifically to the satellite inlet here. Um, the difference is cable, you can split. You can run it to a few different locations. Satellite has to be to one location. And that's the, the one uh, coax hookup right there. Um, yeah, and there's touch on there. Brendan, that feels good. Yeah, it feels good. Okay. You have manual stabilizer jacks on these transcends. 
which you can see down here. This is a three quarter inch socket. So you can put a three quarter inch socket on a drill, bring those down uh, electrically with the drill, or you can just grab the handle, it's inside on the other side there, and you can just crank that down. These are not meant for leveling. So you do not, you know, if you're le off level side to side, you do not like just pick up the side of the trailer with these jacks. The way to level your trailer is you come up on the site, okay, you put a level, probably, I would probably put it right here, right on the floor of the trailer, and put it side to side. See which way you're off side to side. If you're low on, let's say this side, the left side. If you're low on that side, you're gonna pull ahead off the site, put a couple pieces of wood down, a couple long pieces of two by six. I know they're expensive now with COVID, but um, a couple pieces of two by six down there and drive up on that board. On that board. And that's gonna pick up the left side of the trailer. Then you come back in here, see if you're level side to side. Maybe you're not quite level yet. So you have to pull ahead, put another piece of wood down, you know, back and forth like that. That's how you give a, get a level. You level with the wheels first. Then once you're level it side to side, you're gonna take that level, flip it lengthwise, okay? Get the truck off, so unhook your, unhook your hitch, unhook the weight distribution, pull the truck out of the way, and then use your front jack to level it front to back. Once it's level side to side first, front to back second, then you can bring down your stabilizer jacks and they're stabilizing the trailer. So meant to take the bounce of the trailer. So down the snug and then a turn around. That's, that's about all you wanna put on those, just to take the bounce of the trailer. All right. Feel good about that, Brennan? Yeah. Good. Uh, rack and pinion uh, slide on these uh, transcends. Um, uh, there's really not a lot of maintenance to do on here. The uh, if you want to, you know, be really proactive, you can uh, lubricate these seals. You can get like a car seal lubricant from Armor All, and you can lubricate these and lubricate these, just to kind of keep them moist so they don't crack over time. Uh, but that's like to really give you a long, long longev longevity. So you just you take that spray, spray on a rag, and up and down that seal maybe twice a year. That would be uh, above and beyond, which is fantastic for a trailer. Underneath, there's really not a lot to do. If, again, you want to take it to the next level, you could take a, uh, a dry lithium grease or like a Teflon, and you can spray that wheel in through there as the slido comes in and out. Um, again, that's above and beyond. You're probably fine not to do that, but just a little, if you want to have stuff from creaking or groaning a little bit, that's the best way to do that, all right? Uh, okay, coming down this way, we have our sewer drain. So this is the same on all trailers, okay? Um, let's say you're at a site and you have sewer right there. So you've hooked up your sewer hose and you're running it into the sewer that's at the site. We think that you can just leave both tanks open and whatever builds up in the tank's gonna run out. That's not correct. What you can do is you can leave your gray water open, which is our gray handle, okay? And it's labeled as well. You can leave that open. Gray water sinks and showers. That can run out as it happens, easy peasy. But the black water though, you gotta make sure that's closed. What's gonna happen if you leave the black water open, all the liquids will run out and the solids will start to build up, build up and cake on the inside of the tank. So you gotta make sure you leave the black water closed. Let the liquids and the solids build up together. Then once the tank's full, then you're gonna come out here, close the gray and open up the black, okay? If uh, it, the, the danger is if you leave the gray water open when you're draining the black, black water can shoot up there. It's unlikely, but it can shoot back up the gray water tank, which isn't ideal. So the key is one, open at a time. If you have sewer at the site, you can, um, uh, you can leave the gray water open, but you got to make sure you leave the black water closed. Now, if you're at a, if you're at a site that doesn't have sewer, you're going to be going to a dump station after, like, you know, maybe as you leave the campground or as you get home, closer to home. And then that is, that is simpler, right? We're just gonna hook up a hose to there, bring the hose down to where the dump station is. Probably gonna pull your black water first, let that kind of dirty up your hose, and then you're gonna come here and pull your gray water and let that kind of clean out your hose with your less dirty water. So that's that, that feel okay, Brennan? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, now these transcends, they also have a black water flush. That's a nice accessory piece here. Um, when you're draining your black water, whether you're at a site or whether you're at a dump station, what you can do is you can take a hose. It's gonna be different locations in every model. This is a 260, so it's here at the back where the washroom is. You can take a hose, hook that up to here, 
and that's going to spray the inside of your black water tank. The very important thing is that when you hook up water here, you have to make sure your black water is open. If your black water is closed and you hook up a hose here, you're going to build pressure in the tank. Sounds disastrous, right? So make sure when you hook up city water, or sorry, hook up the black water flush kit, you have your black water valve open. Very imperative. Um, <clears throat> okay. Is that okay there, Brennan? Yep. Thank you. I need some affirmation here, buddy. I'm, I'm feeling You're doing comfortable. fantastic. All right, thanks, buddy. Um, right here is our 30 amp cord. So all these transcends, the explorers, the regular transcends, uh, are 30 amps with a detachable style cord, about 25 feet, and it's a 30 amp cord. Some of them are 50 amp. The big ones, yeah, yeah, you're right. So the uh, 297, uh, the 327. 297, yeah, yep. okay. 297 and the 321 are 50 amp service. So why they're 50 amp service is because those models are prepped for a secondary AC, never really come stock like that. Uh, but you could add a secondary AC. If you add a secondary AC on one of those bigger transcends, you need to have 50 amp service to run that. Your standard loadout though is a smaller transcend with 30 amps and one AC. To run the AC, you have to have 30 amps of the site. So you have to imagine this cord's unraveled, we've gone to the post, we've plugged it in to a 30 amp site, you're good to go. Let's say you're at a site that only has 15 amps or you're plugging into your house. I've got a little adapter here to adapt from 30 amps to 15, okay? And uh, that's great. I can use everything on the trailer except for the AC. We can use the lights, we can use the microwave, we can use you know, all the plugs, that kind of stuff on 15 amps, but we cannot use the AC, okay? Um, that's good. That's good there. Uh, Blackwater flush kit, we talked about that. We're going to talk about the tires here on the door side. We have a roof ladder. Uh, that's some, you know that's some, a nice feature on these transcends. You got to be up on the roof checking your seals every 90 days. I say that in every video I can. Uh, we've done a roof maintenance video, uh, so we'll put a link to that down below um, in the in the description there. And we've also done a wind rising video. Uh, we'll put a link to that as well, and maybe the hitch video too, Chrissy. Link down below. Um, cool. Let's walk around the front side here. No reason to cut the video. <clears throat> Talk with the jacks, furnace vent, don't touch the furnace vent. All right, don't put screens on it. Don't touch that. This is like an outside TV hookup. All right, so you can kind of mount a TV bracket out here if you wanted to hook up from the coax. If this receptacle isn't working, same thing. It's probably a GFI inside that's kicked. So that's a, that's a thing there. We talked about filling the freshwater tank already um, through that kind of power feed over there in, in the convenience center. But if you don't have an end on the hose when you go to the site or when you go to the campground, you can fill your uh, freshwater tank from here. Just lay the hose inside uh, and then turn the water on. When the tank is full, it's going to splash back out at you. Okay, so uh, they both do the same thing, but sometimes you get to a, uh, a fill station and there's no end on the hose to fill your tank. So that's why this is nice. Um, and we're going to talk about the water pump, how to get tent water out of that tank here when we get inside. Now, on every model is different where this location is, but wherever the fill is, you can pretty well guarantee your drain for the freshwater tank is down below there. Um, so, uh, where are we? yeah, so this is a little bit of an uncomfortable position, but there's a little gate valve. Oh, that they've run out here for us. Nice. So, this guy right here. So that's the basic gate valve to specifically drain the freshwater tank. So open, close, okay? So that's all right. So that's how you drain your freshwater. Now, tires. <clears throat> These are 15 inch tires. The lug nuts are, uh, should be torqued down to 110 foot pounds, okay? When you get home from your first trip, like bring it back from the dealership, you should retorque these because the first couple trips, those can kind of uh, loosen off a little bit, so torque your lug nuts down, 110 foot-pounds. And I'm just looking for the tire pressure here. Uh, Sydney. Yeah, you're not allowed to go faster than 75 miles an hour, which is insane. Sixty-five PSI. So you should have your tires at 65 PSI at all times. Uh, these are nitro-fill tires. 
Honestly, that's a little bit of a sales pitch. This is not a race car. You don't have to put nitrogen in. Just keep topping up with air, is my opinion. Um, but make sure that's 65 PSI. Most of the times when you have a flat or you have tire wear, that's, that's abnormal. It's because you're running on lower uh, air pressure. So make sure you keep it at 65 PSI. The stairs themselves, pretty straightforward. You don't need to strap these down. You just sit in there like that, pull out. These are one of the things though. Jeez, oh. make me look a little silly there. These are one of the things that you should lubricate. So uh, probably hit them with like a, a dry Teflon lube and all the joints and all the pivot points just to keep those moving smooth. Same thing with the locks and all your doors, like your man door and your baggage door. Um, make sure you keep on hitting those with lubricant, otherwise they're gonna kinda get crusty and uh, uh, not work that easily. Right here's our water heater. The switches for this thing are inside. Um, but this is a suburban water heater. So a suburban water heater comes with an anode rod which acts as the drain for your, uh, your your water heater. You have to imagine, there's like a big bladder in behind here, okay? And all the water sits in there and gets heated. But when you go to winterize, you gotta take this out to drain the water itself, all right? So watch the winterization, winterization video for that. Specifically though, an anode rod, you gotta be uh, replacing this basically every year. When you take this out to drain for the winter, you're gonna, look, you're gonna notice it looks all ratty and, and kind of pulled apart. That's because the hard water is going to be breaking down this anode rod instead of breaking down the inside of the tank. So that's a key feature. If this looks crappy or you just, you know, it's not expensive, 10 bucks, replace this every year. Then there is a little switch in here. It's down here on the left. This gets forgotten about often. So there's a safety switch for the electric side of the water heater. There's a switch inside, but there's like a, uh, an override switch here. So you can, if you have this off, you can flip that switch on and off as much as you want. It's not gonna run the electric water heater, so you have to have this on first, and then you can flip it on um, uh, electric in there. The reason that switch is there is so that after you've winterized and someone flips the switch on inside by accident, you can, if you have that turned off, it won't turn the water heater on and you won't blow your element. So winterizing, typically you, drain the, you take the anode rod, drain the water out, and flip this off so that it doesn't get flipped on by accident inside. Um, good. And then yeah, otherwise don't touch this. Don't, don't, you know, don't stick your fingers anywhere. Don't uh, pull this valve, nothing like that. Just leave it all exactly how it is, okay? And you know, we did that winterizing video, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not expensive to have us do that. So maybe bring it to the dealer, bring it to your local dealer, uh, whichever to get the winterizing done properly. Um, okay, the, uh, they do have a backup camera prep here at the top. Uh, pretty simple to install that. So if you, if you want to get a backup camera from us or Amazon or whatever, you just keep the, the case, come, the, there's two screws there that comes out, and then you fit the camera in, screw the camera in, and there's a separate screen that goes in your dash. Pretty straightforward install there. Awesome. Now, while we're doing the outside stuff here, I'm just gonna bring the awning out. So I'm just, I come here to the convenience or the, you know, the monitor panel or the switches, whatever you want to call that. I push the awning button and extend. You really can't extend this too far. It, uh, uh, what will end up happening is you'll actually start retracting the awning up backwards, which isn't in the world. Basically you want to bring it out. There's a little balance here, but stuck up. There it is. So see that balance there? This is the first time this awning's been opened, but see that balance there? How it's hanging down to 90 degrees? That's ideally where, how far you have the awning out. Um, you can notice here we have a little bit of a pitch, probably about a foot or so, so rain can run off. But if you want to drain on, uh, rain off one side or the other, you grab this handle right here, press this, and now the, the rain's gonna run off. Now, on really rainy situations, you just gotta put the awning away. And if it's windy at all, you've gotta put the awning away. It is never a warranty item if the awning collapses in the rain or if it gets blown off in the wind. It's never a warranty thing. So, windy at all, bring your awning up. Raining hard, bring the awning up. Um, 
at your own risk if you leave that open. Grand Design's not gonna pay for us to replace these arms because they got flipped over the trailer there, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, like I said, if you extend it too far, not the end of the world, you'll start wrapping it backwards, just, just go the opposite way. Um, then you push, bring it up, just push your track. Easy peasy. Right on guys, we're inside that Transcend here. Uh, I said 260 RB, I don't know why I said that, it's a 221. Um, but that doesn't matter. This is about how to operate this. So we're gonna go through the inside operation. Uh, first things first, we got a few safety things. So always by the door, there'll be some kind of fire extinguisher. That's for extinguishing fires. Um, then we have a uh, smoke alarm, which is usually in the main living area. This has its own nine volt battery, okay? This should be checked and replaced as need be. And then there's a carbon monoxide detector that's also got its own nine volt battery, which should be checked and replaced. And then you have a propane detector that is wired directly into the 12 volt system. So no individual battery on that. Uh, but if the battery on the front gets low, let's say the solar panel stops working, battery starts drying down, it gets down below nine, 10 volts, that's gonna start beeping once every 30 seconds, let you know um, it's no, no longer able to detect propane. Then there's an alarm sound. So the alarm goes nuts. It's like beep, 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 beep. Um, so that's, you know, if there's a propane leak. So maybe you've left the burner on, uh, maybe something's happened, there's a propane leak. What also can set this off is if you're doing like some weird cleaning stuff, um, not that you do weird cleaning stuff, but if you're using uh, cleaning materials that are uh, different, I guess, they can set that off as well. So kind of think of what you've been doing in the vicinity of the area before you necessarily think, oh, propane leak. But first thing you do, you have yourself a, an alarm going off here, you walk outside, shut the propane off, leave the door open. That's, if you have a propane leak, that's what you do and that's it. And then you call somebody, right? Uh, okay, so that's the safety stuff. Uh, the most dangerous part of the trailer is the stovetop. And why that is, is people will uh, turn the burners on here and use this as a heating appliance. And that is not like, you know, hunting camps or whatever, they would heat with this stuff. And what would happen is you'd go to sleep leaving the burners on and you just never would wake up because you have a you know you have car you have carbon monoxide coming off those flames there right so this is the most dangerous part of it use it for cooking shut it off you're good to go um do not use it to heat the trailer okay but it's a very important part of the trailer so before you try to light your 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 furnace or your oven or your water heater you got to come here and light your burners first so when i came in here today that's what i did first i take this go to light I know the propane's on because there's a little red light there, and then I just spark it. Same thing with this burner. Go here, spark. And then I can control the temperature however you want to do that from here, right? So pretty straightforward. Always like this first though. First thing you do in the trip, get to the spot, light that first. Now what's cool is you can now use the sparker to also light the pilot on the oven. So we're gonna pull this down Come on this side, Brian, so you get a good view here. I'm gonna turn this to flame, and I'm gonna hold this in. As I hold this in and compress this knob, it's allowing gas to go to the pilot. So I'm gonna hold this in, I'm gonna spark it. Now, there's a little trick here. You can actually, yeah, it's too bright. But sometimes you can actually see the, uh, the pilot light reflection there. But I'm just gonna get my hands and knees to see here. Can you, can you come down here, Brian, and see that? So see that pilot light at the back there? I'm still holding this button in, letting the thermal couple heat up. Then I'll let it out. I'm, I've let the button out, now I'm gonna turn this to whatever temperature I want. See how the burner lights up there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then when I'm done using it for the weekend, I can leave it on pilot if I want, or I can just turn it back off. It's pretty easy to light it on and off. But one of the cool things is, is you don't have to light this with the lighter anymore. You just use the sparker. Okay. If the flame goes out for whatever reason, that thermal couple will cool down and the gas will be shut off. So this is a very safe appliance that way. All right. So that's cool there. Around this side over here, we have all of our uh, switches, right? So we can turn our lights on and off, our outside lights on and off. We're gonna be in and out for the slide outs. Um, when we operate the slide in or out, we just push in, 
vibes coming in right now. When it gets all the way in, you gotta make sure nothing's in the way, right? That's the key. Uh, when it gets all the way in, it's actually gonna start like a clicking noise. It's a clutch. That does not do any damage. You can do that all day. It's just a clutch letting you know it's in all the way. Uh, it'll make the same noise when it goes back out. Now, one thing we should type on the outside is uh, when you go to close your slide and you've been stationary there for a week, you gotta make sure there's no debris or leaves or pine needles on the slide itself. So get up on the roof, sweep that off before you close out your slide. Close up your slide. We'll go back out. We're back. All right. Uh, so here's our panel, which has all our light switches and that kind of stuff. So you have inside lights, outside lights, water pump. Okay, so the water pump is not if you're hooked up to the city. If you're hooked up to the city, city water connection, you just have water at the taps, okay? The water pumps for if you fill the freshwater tank, so that bladder that's underneath the trailer, all right? You, that's full, you're gonna turn the water pump on, and the pump is gonna take water from that tank and pump it to your taps, okay? So that's how you do that. When the, uh, when the water pump comes up to pressure, it will shut off. So we, we can't hear it right now, it's not rumbling in the background. That's because it's up to pressure already. Uh, quick little note, if you uh, have your water pump on and uh, uh, you can't keep hearing it come on and off throughout the day, throughout the night, and you're not using the plumbing, that's because you have a leak somewhere. So you need to find that leak, have us find that leak, figure that out, because you're losing pressure somewhere. So uh, there's gotta be a leak somewhere where that's going. So anyways, it'll come up to pressure, once it's up, the pressure will stay, and then as you open the tap on again, it will come kick on again. So that's pretty straightforward. Gas water heater, guess what? Flip it on, it runs on gas. You hear like a click, click, click on the outside, and then the roar of the flame. Um, it's waiting to light, so it's got this DSI light lit up right here. Um, this will go out when it starts to light, so we'll just wait for that here. There it goes. Now, if you try to light your uh, water heater before you've lit your burners. There's not enough gas there yet, especially because this water is right at the back of the trailer. Uh, there's not gas there yet. So always light your burners first, then go let try to light your water heater. If it, it'll try to light three times by itself after the third time of trying to light and it doesn't light, this DSI light will come back on. Turn it back off, turn it back on. Do that a couple times and then call us with the issue. Uh, a lot of times just, just gas not there yet. For the electric water heater, just kick it on, that's all you gotta do, all right? So uh, there's no sounds that come from that. You'll have hot water, you know, 45, 55 minutes later. Um, there is nothing saying that you can't run them both at the same time. So if you wanna have hot water, like back-to-back -back showers kind of thing, you can flip them both on at the same time. No problem there. This is our radio, okay? So uh, uh, you have an on-off button. That's pretty straightforward. Volume, inside, outside speakers. Sorry, Brandon. Um, inside, outside speaker, so zone one, zone two. Uh, zone two will be outside, zone one will be inside. You have USB here, so if you have something on a stick, you can put it in here, or come on the TV. Um, you have to play around with that, figure out how to use your radio. I can explain it to you, but um, yeah, anyways. TV itself, these are all TCL Roku TVs now on these grand designs. Uh, good to transcend, which means it's a smart TV. So if you have Wi-Fi at the park, you're actually gonna be able to hook up to Netflix using your remote. Um, uh, pretty slick there. You'll just read the manual on that and try to figure that out. But it, um, my wife did it in the garage yesterday, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, hopefully she's not watching this video. Um, all right, then uh, our cable and satellite. Uh, we talked about that on the outside. So in your front convenience center, you have a, yeah, thanks. So that's right here. Um, this one right here, the top one beside the switch is your cable or your TV antenna. So with the button out, it's for cable. Button in, that's boosting the signal on the TV antenna. So whatever you're using. There's a digital TV antenna up there. Depending on where you're at, you may pick up something. Um, but in Canada, it's pretty limited. Uh, this one right here is specifically for satellite. So you've run a coax from the satellite to the side of the trailer. It's going to come out to here. You're going to put this into the receiver receiver into the TV and you're going to be able to use a satellite again that's pretty super campery uh, so you can do that but if you want to use the TV antenna push the button in if you want to use cable to site push the button out okay 
talk about that. Microwaves and microwave. Uh, these 12 volt fridges on these guys, they're, they're way, they're really easy. They're much easier than the gas electric ones are. You just have like an on off switch. Okay, so off is all the way left, on is all the way to the right, and you control the temperature in between. So pretty straightforward stuff there. Freezer controls is controlled from that inside compartment too, that inside switch there. Um, in the bedroom, not really anything to talk about, I don't think, eh, Brendan? No. No. This cool. is the thermostat, man. Oh, yeah, good call. Good call. Come around the side here, Brendan. I'll get on this side. So, um, basically, with a the thermostat, you have up and down for temperature, and then you have this bigger button for the modes. So, first mode is off. See how it says off right there? Push it again, it'll go to fan. High, low, or low, high. Next one, it'll go to cool, so we can control the temperature. Cool is AC. So we're probably above 33 degrees in here. It's a colder day, but. Um, so we're obviously above 33 degrees. We're at 52. So the AC is gonna operate until it brings down the temperature to 33 degrees. And you just control that from the up and down button. Okay, push the mode again. It'll go cool low, so it'll, it'll kick the, the fan down on the AC down to a lower setting if you want it to be a little quieter. Push that again. It'll go to auto, which means it'll automatically control the fan speed depending on what they want to do with uh, to get that cooler or not. Push it again. Again. It'll go to heat. Heat is the furnace. So we are below 97 degrees, I guarantee it. So uh, the furnace fan just kicked on, we can hear that. There'll be like a little bit of sparking from the, uh, the igniter and then the flame itself will, will roar. Um, after you shut the furnace off, push the mode button, it'll go to off. After you shut the furnace off, the flame will go out, but the fan will continue to run for a couple minutes after, just get rid of any excess heat or if there's a propane leak or something, just to blow that all out. But that's, uh, that's what's going on there. Uh, feel good about the thermostat? Yep. Yeah. All right, uh, into the bathroom. I mentioned the GFI receptacle in the convenience center and outside. So that's right here on this particular model. So if uh, if that receptacle isn't working, come inside here, check this. If it's tripped, there'll be a yellow light right there. Basically what can happen is if you're plugged in, straightening your hair outside and it's raining, um, you can, uh, there'll be a little bit of a short there. So instead of electrocuting you, it's gonna trip this breaker. So. Uh, that's what that is. So just to reset that, you just push that in. There we go. The toilet's pretty straightforward. Key with the toilet is you leave water in the bowl, and that water keeps the stink down into the tank and the pipes. So always leave a couple inches in the bowl. You have a shut off on the uh, shower head there, so if you have the water where you want, like temperature wise, you can shut that off and then um, conserve water for the next shower kind of thing. Um, Anyway, so uh, we got ourselves a uh, breakers and fuses right here. All right, and this will be in different locations on different floor plans. Uh, but you have breakers over here on the left, and they're 110. So you have to be plugged in the, to operate those there. But they kind of look like that after a trip. So if you come here, you have a problem with your electrical. That's what that looks like. Then you have, and they're labeled, right? And then the fuse over here on the right, they're also labeled. If a fuse is blown, it's kind of hard to tell typically, right? But this one, they have a red light beside each fuse. So the fuse is blown, light lights up, lets you know that fuse is blown. There's two fuses here that don't have labels and they don't have lights. There are these two 40 amp fuses. If you ever hook up your battery up backwards by accident one day, or if the positive lead of the battery, that the, the, the lead there touches the frame of the trailer and shorts out, it will kick these two 40 amp fuses. So keep that in mind. The way I can tell is uh, uh, you'll be plugged into hydro and your battery will start getting low uh, because it's, it's using the juice there, so it's not converting energy. So um, anyways, if, if you have a, a, like a 12 volt issue across the board, it's probably because those two 40 amp fuses are blown. Right on. Anything else on the side, Brennan? No. I don't think we're doing good. Yeah. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you appreciate the fact we're putting this kind of stuff out. Uh, this isn't just for our customers, so uh, you know, feel free to watch it if you buy them from somewhere else. Um, if uh, you have any questions, give us a call, 705-833-2539. You can send us an email at sales at 
LazyAcres.com. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Have yourself a good day.